Hey now, welcome to the Living Your Hope Live program. I am your host, Joe Olson. So glad to have you along tonight. Tonight we're going to help you put all the pieces together with a teaching called, What Did I Miss? Later on tonight, we're going to have our friend Malin Jones doing a song called, Don't You Give Up Now. And in just a little bit, we're going to go over to the KROS newsroom for a live news event. Speaking of the news, there's nothing fake about the news we get from our friend, I Cheat Him. Your news, your world, always within reach on KROS. Good evening, I'm I Cheat Him with KROS News. A death row inmate in Texas is in trouble for selling tickets on eBay to his own execution. What's he going to get? Death plus six months. More on this story at 11. Round here, we don't ask frivolous questions. We ask serious questions. Hey Siri, how are you today? I feel good. Thanks for asking. You're welcome. Can I ask you some questions? Sure, just ask. Is the United States Post Office just a way of getting your recycling delivered straight to your house? If you insist. I was diagnosed with an antisocial behavior disorder. Is there a support group I can avoid meeting with? Sure. Why do loafers have tassels on them? Did your foot just graduate or something? Wait a second. If your mother asked you to hand out invitations for your brother's surprise birthday party, does that mean he's her favorite twin? I'm sorry. Are procrastinators afraid of Saturday the 14th? Hmm. If you arrest a mime, do you still have to tell him he has the right to remain silent? Gosh. The meek shall inherit the earth, if that's okay with everyone else. Okay. Hey Siri, tell me a joke. I asked a cable installer what time it was. Uh Uh-huh. The cable installer said, between 8 a.m. and 4 (laughs) p.m. Because they never know what time they're coming. Which one of King Arthur's knights built the round table? Which one? Circumference. Every week we have two great opportunities for you to connect and gather with other believers. On Wednesday night at 6.30, we have Living Your Hope in the Lobby, a small group where we gather to watch this program. We have a time of discussion and prayer. On Sundays, we gather with our church family at 10.30 a.m. to worship. Both of these events happen at Living Hope Family Church at 7333 East 22nd Street. Hope lives here. Do you want to subscribe? I want to like. And I want to subscribe. You can't handle subscribing. Here at Living Your Hope Live, we've been getting all sorts of requests from celebrities wanting to do endorsements for our swag and for our apparel. You don't have to be famous to wear this stuff. You just got to be cool. Click on the link below and we're going to donate 25% of all profits to church planting. Yeah, you're cool. Well, it's time for us to go over to KROS for a live news event. No matter where you are, you haven't been able to get away from the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. It's been everywhere. What people don't realize is our friend Johnny Depp who just released his album, Apocalyptic Dip, is also on trial. We're going to join that right now live. All right. Uh, Today we are hearing the people versus Johnny Dip. Bailiff, do we have a list of charges? Yes, Your Honor, we certainly do. All right, well, let's hear those. Well, in March 16, 2003, it's reported that he tore the tag off of his mattress. Okay, what else you got? 
April 2008, he spit on the sidewalk. We also have it on good authority that he once turned himself in for a reward and then tried to escape. He did the money. Your Honor, right here in our own state, he fished without a license. Your Honor, the sign said fine for fishing. Quiet, you. We'll hear your side later. Carry on. He used his ankle monitor to open the neighbor's garage. Took his car for a ride. What else? We have it on good authority that he didn't rewind his blockbuster videos three times. Okay, what else you got? Well, he snuck into the drive-in in his neighbor's trunk. Every night for a week. We also have it here that he double dips in the salsa every time he goes to the restaurant. Your Honor, it says here that when he went and performed in England last week, he told a bunch of Princess Di jokes to the audience. Okay, and we also have a report here. Here's a pair. Okay, here we go. He stole towels and a shower curtain from the Hyatt Regency. He takes the pens from every bank. Well, of course he does. We all take a pen. No, Your Honor, the ones with the chains attached. Oh. They say that every day he goes into Costco and eats a free lunch at the sample counters. We have it on good authority that last year he sued himself and lost. Is that all? No, Your Honor. This morning he walked into your very courtroom and he asked out every female member of the jury on a date. All right. Uh, you know, we're going to skip the trial on this one. I'm going to just say guilty as charged. <laughs>
And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Let's begin tonight by talking about the opportunity. The wolves were decimating the farmer's sheep, so the Farmers Association raised the bounty on them to $100 a pelt. Two hunters, Sam and Ed, decided they could use the money, so they got their gear together and headed out into the wide open spaces to shoot some wolves and make themselves rich. They had just fallen asleep out under the stars when a noise woke Ed. By the light of the campfire, he saw the eyes of a hundred wolves, teeth gleaming. He shook his friend and whispered hoarsely, Sam, Sam, wake up, we're rich. How do you and I see a church service? Is it a commitment, a duty, a necessity, a joy, a privilege? It can certainly be any or all of those things, but above all, it is always an opportunity. It is an opportunity to be in the presence of God, to gather with like-hearted and like-minded people, to honor Jesus with our worship, and to hear the word of God and to be changed by it. Here in our text, the disciples are in the middle of a church service when Jesus, who has already been crucified, walks in and says, Peace, man. I don't want to miss what God is going to do and what he's going to speak in the midst of his church. I don't want to hear about a great church service after I've missed it. Mark Twain said, I was seldom able to see an opportunity until it had ceased to be one. Every church service is a unique opportunity because the presence of God dwells in a powerful dimension with the gathering church. You're not going to get this from YouTube. If you're watching this program right now, you're watching it online, either on YouTube or on Facebook. That's great. I appreciate that. But I can tell you, if this is the extent of your spiritual diet, it's going to fall short. There is something about gathering with the people of God, about being there in the midst when Jesus is there, that will transform you like no program on TV is ever going to do. We don't want to be satisfied with just getting some information or getting another spiritual teaching. We want to be where Jesus is and he gathers with his people. The Bible records many life-changing church services. You can read about Zacharias in Luke chapter 1 who goes in for just another chance to minister before God, but he's met by an angel who tells him John the Baptist is going to be born to him as a son. In Acts chapter 2, the church gathers together to pray, and the Holy Spirit falls, and they're all baptized in the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 10, we read that Peter goes into the house of a Gentile named Cornelius, not even realizing that God is about to pour out his Spirit on the Gentile world. What about the group of people who decided to go hear Jesus preach on the side of a mountain? Little did they know that they were about to witness the Sermon on the Mount. These are all church services that somebody could have said, Uh, hey, honey, are we going to church today? You never know what you're going to miss. I have many single church services that have served as a reference point to my life ever since. In December 1984, I went to a storefront shopping center and listened to a music night with a group called Vida Nueva who preached the gospel. That was the night the Holy Spirit began to convict me and draw me to a place of salvation. In June 1985, I went to a Wednesday night service where a guy named Eric Strutz was preaching. That night I went down to the altar and was filled with the Holy Spirit. January 18th, 1986, a Sunday morning, a man named Kim Pensinger was preaching about world evangelism. I went down to the altar to pray, and it was that morning that God called me to preach the gospel. Mid-1987, I went to a Sunday night service, and I talked to, for the first time, the mother of two young children who ended up becoming my wife of the last 32 years. There have been many crucial moments where I've been in a church service and heard the Word of God come to my life just the way I needed to hear it at just the right moment. I don't want to miss the great opportunity that it is to gather with God's people and to be in the presence of God. I want to talk to you secondly tonight about the time Thomas stays home. Our text is this moment where Jesus enters the room after his crucifixion, he ministers to his disciples, but where was Tom? We don't know. The Bible doesn't say so. So, I might just take a few minutes and speculate. 
I'm sure Tom was emotionally taxed. Like the other disciples, he had just watched Jesus crucified. You can bet he wasn't sleeping well after that. I'm sure he was also feeling very physically worn out. I'm sure his emotional state, I'm sure he was bummed out. Here he had given his whole life to following this guy, and suddenly he watches him die right before his eyes. I'm sure he felt fearful after watching Jesus suffer and die the way he had, and people knowing that he was one of the ones who had followed Jesus, I'm sure he felt a measure of fear that something like that could happen to him. Maybe he even felt a little bit overcommitted, huh? Man, I've been going at it for three years. I've been going nonstop. I kind of need a break. Maybe Tom asked the question, Honey, are we going to church today? Of course, the next day, Thomas hears the news. Jesus showed up. In high school, I took Algebra 1 four times. In high school, I failed Algebra 1 four times. I even took slow Algebra 1 and failed it slowly. The reason for that is I wasn't all that diligent about doing my work, and I would end up missing a step or two or three. And the way algebra works is each step is built on the last step, and I would find myself behind and never quite be able to catch up again. We see here that Tom cannot receive or believe the word of the other disciples. To them, this was revelation straight from the throne of God. They had seen Jesus with their own eyes, but Tom doesn't believe. That's not God. I want proof. Now Tom has fallen a few steps behind the other disciples. After a lifetime of church services, I've come to realize that every church service is the same, and yet every church service is different. We do the routine of worship, we do the prayer, we do the giving, we do the preaching, we do the altar service. The only thing that will save this from becoming just a dry ritual is Jesus showing up. But like Thomas, we can lose our sense of anticipation. What's the big deal if I miss one service? It's always the same. Until Jesus shows up with a purpose in mind. After this service, all of the other disciples were different. Thomas remains the same. Hearing about what happened wasn't enough. As we read this text, we realize that there are three distinct things that happen during this church service. Let's go through those three. The first one is a restoration of confidence and commission. If you think about the state the disciples must have been in when they walked into that room, they are fearful, they are depressed, they are just at the end of themselves until Jesus walks in and says to them, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. These disciples now have God's assurance of the same anointing, the same overshadowing that Jesus had in his ministry. They're no longer fearful, now they have focus, they have vision, they have a confidence and a commission that they can now go out and continue the work that they were doing with Jesus. Secondly, they found a place of completion. Think about how empty they must have felt. For three years, they've been following Jesus. Their confidence is in Jesus. They watched him minister. They watched him heal. They watched him raise the dead. They watched him preach the gospel. Suddenly, he's gone. But the Bible says here in our text that he breathed on him. This is the same words that are used in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, where it says, And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Just as God completed Adam with his own breath, he breathed on these men and they were all changed in that moment. Thirdly, we see that there came an indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus walks in and says to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, while the baptism was yet to come on the day of Pentecost, this was the promise of the Comforter being delivered to the disciples. This Holy Spirit began to work in them and through them. Can you imagine Thomas hearing about this church service? The disciples are all excited. They're probably all talking at once, telling him all these things. We were commissioned. We were completed. We were indwelt by the Holy Spirit. And Thomas is looking from one to the other. And he says, I, I, don't, I don't be, I just can't believe this. The text records that Jesus appeared to another gathering eight days later. Can you imagine for Thomas, probably the longest eight days of his life with these other disciples just telling him over and over about this, but take note of some distinct differences that happen on the second visit. Like before, Jesus walks into a locked room, he speaks peace on them, he shows them the scars. 
But Thomas still does not have the same experience that the others did. The Bible doesn't record the same things happening during that second meeting. And think about it, because of this one service that he missed, instead of being called the twin, which wasn't a bad nickname, from now on he becomes forever Doubting Thomas. Wayne Gretzky said, You miss 100% of the shots you never take. Let's close tonight by talking about the blessing of faithfulness. Old Faithful is not the largest geyser in Yellowstone National Park, nor does it reach the greatest height, but it is by far the most popular one. Why? It is regular and dependable, hence its name, Old Faithful. We need some old faithful saints in the church. Listen to this quote. Vance Havner said, God is faithful, and he expects his people to be faithful. God's word speaks of faithful servants, faithful in a few things, faithful in the least, faithful in the Lord, faithful ministers. It all points up to that day when he will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. The only service that counts is faithful service. True faith shows up in faithfulness. Not everyone can sing or preach, but all can be faithful. I think about when God called Gideon into battle. God chose to use 300 committed men rather than 32,000 vacillating ones. The need of the hour is for committed and faithful men and women of God. I don't know if you're sensing what I'm sensing, but I feel we are in the last days and that this next year is going to be critical. Now is the hour of opportunity. Charles Swindoll said, Time is short. Opportunity is knocking. Please answer it. The age-old aphorism remains true. Four things come not back. The spoken word, the spent arrow, time passed, and the neglected opportunity. I believe God has placed every last one of us in his church by his will and by his purposes. Jim Elliott said, wherever you are, be all there. Live to the hilt every situation you believe to be the will of God. There is more going on in every church service than you and I realize. Someone said, has not every preacher an invisible congregation? At every service there is a dim, unseen, listening throng. Who are they? Christ is present, the angels gather, and don't forget those outside the church who will be touched by your sermon through its impact on your listeners. And yet there is another audience, a vast one who will be affected more than we know. There are generations yet unborn. Posterity is simply the invisible congregation sitting a little further down the aisle. As with Thomas, there is much to lose with every neglected opportunity to be gathered together in God's presence with God's people. I'm not saying any of this to guilt you or to try to manipulate you tonight. I believe we're coming into an hour where we are going to need one another. We are going to need the church. We need to understand that it is a great opportunity and a privilege to gather into the house of God with God's people. To lift a quote from Dr. Seuss in Horton Hears a Who, I meant what I said and I said what I meant. A Christian is faithful 100%. I can tell you tonight, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. We are going to be committed to everything that God's doing, and we are going to be a part of God's people. I'm inviting you tonight to make the same commitment, to get yourself involved in the church, to serve God, to be there, as God is going to do some powerful things in these last days. I don't want to end up like Thomas asking the question, what did I miss? Especially when it comes to standing before God in eternity. I don't want to have missed my opportunity to know Christ in the here and now. As you're watching this program, perhaps you don't know Jesus Christ personally. Maybe you have not made that commitment in your life to know him and to follow him. Tonight, I'm going to say a simple prayer. I believe if you'll agree with me as I pray this prayer, God will honor that. You can begin to know him tonight. Let's pray together. God, I thank you Let you lay down your life. God, to pay for our sins. We confess our sin before you tonight, God. We ask you to take the life that you gain by raising from the dead. Put that same life in us so that we might live to know you today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's set a new commitment in our lives. Let's not miss out. Let's take the advice of our friend Milan Jones and don't you give up now. Don't you give up now, don't you give up now, don't you give up, don't you give up.
give up now, don't you give up now, don't you give up We live in a cold, cold world With many scarred boys and girls So many broken dreams That turn into nightmares I am one of them And you are probably one of them too But if we come together We can make dreams come true And I know Your heart is broken And I know Mine is too But I know We're not forsaken And I know We're about to break through So don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up Hey Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up So many broken hearts Wandering in the dark I'm just trying to be a light Instead of cursing the dark But Father, Father, Father We need some healing from above Oh, 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 oh. And I know Your heart is broken And I know See, mine is too But I know We're not forsaken And I know We're about to break through So don't give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up Come on Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up Brighter days And all that pain will go away Yeah, yeah, yeah Trust in Jesus and have faith Yeah, yeah, yeah Cause he already made a way Do you believe? So don't give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up Hey hey Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up Hey hey Don't you give up now Don't you give up Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up Hey 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 Don't you give up now Don't you give up now Don't you give up Let's go Thanks so much for joining me tonight. Live in your hope this week. The Lord bless you. You can't have too many expressions in there. <laughs> That's a good one. I, I, yeah, yeah. It was so cold in New York last night that it. Ba 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 ba. Good evening, I'm I gentlemen. Man, you got a you got a, a plethora of them. This is going to add to the rest of the plethora. Ah! The New England, uh, the New, the New England, <laughs> the New England. Hey now.